welcome back dear students welcome to our lecture 7 of marine refrigeration in today's lecture we will be discussing uh, plotting of uh, vapor compression cycles on ts diagram and ph diagram we will then move on to study this uh, ph diagram very carefully we will then also explore the possibility of using say the data in tabular form where we such as the one that is shown before you the property tables for the refrigerant we will understand these tables then we will also look upon the conditions that are referenced by each say either the property diagram or the property table because it is a very crucial thing to kept in mind before attempting to solve numericals you must end up uh, doing something wrong if you cross refer between a diagram and a table also it is uh, very vital to examine ph diagram very carefully because of the kind of say the because of the conditions in which uh, they are drawn at a different uh, set of scales so that makes it a uh, a much say complex uh, content to analyze okay so let us begin with our fundamental plotting on say plotting of vapor compression cycle on ts diagram first so before attempting uh, a numerical we have to first look at the data what is given to us so if you carefully peruse the data identify what is given conditions say if you are given if a cycle is operating say between t equals to 40 degrees ambient th tl is equals to 20 degrees minus refrigerated space so if you are given some data something like this so you are uh, first thing is clear that you are specifying the upper limit and lower limit of temperatures more so you have to understand whether it is an ideal cycle so you have to check for a wording something like is it ideal cycle ideal vapor compression cycle is the word used if the word is used then further look at the conditions conditions of uh, refrigerant conditions of refrigerant just before compression and just after condensation so you should first read data check for hints in the numerical whether it is a vapor ideal vapor compression cycle or not then you have to look for conditions of the refrigerant just before compression and just after condensation only then you should attempt drawing the vapor compression cycle on any property diagram without looking at the conditions of these two yardsticks we may enter into a wrong interpretation of the problem so please keep this in mind now i will define things very clearly to facilitate a simple case of constructing a vapor compression cycle on a ts plot so what are the given parameters temperature high is 40 degree centigrade and the refrigerated space is minus 20 degree centigrade this is minus 20 degree centigrade okay so minus so 
So once we read this data carefully, look at how we will construct the diagram. First identify on the TS plot, it is very easy to identify the temperature. So 40 degrees catch hold of the 40 degrees point here on the y axis right so this is the 40 degrees and on the right hand side too you would find a scale so which is very convenient to draw this a straight line so having drawn this t equals to 40 degrees you would draw the refrigerated space temperature in the similar line in the, on the same lines so minus 20 you will uh, construct a straight line And if we are stated, if our numerical or the case states that the state or the condition of the refrigerant after condensation is at saturated liquid, we know where to look for. Right? So if, I will take that assumption that uh, the condense after the end of condensation, the refrigerant is existing as saturated liquid. So we will mark off the point there, we will begin our sketch of the cycle. Now here the refrigerant would undergo ice enthalpic expansion. We have discussed it yesterday in the previous lecture. So we will have to keep enthalpy constant in our process. Whereas if you look at the, the x axis that is provided to you in this plot, it is specific entropy. We cannot draw a straight line down below. It is not isentropic process. So we have to look for lines of constant enthalpy which are in the close region. Say for example this green line 110 kilojoule per kg happened to be a line of constant enthalpy. So we have to maintain parallelism to that uh, particular process or line. Our process has to be describing smoothly in a way that uh, it is parallel to it. If you don't find a parallel line, you have to interpret between two lines. So once we maintain this uh, parallelism, we can complete our expansion process. Then we have to see where we have to look at the end of uh, the evaporator section or just at the inlet of uh, compression. So we are told again that if it is at saturated vapor. So we know where to look. We will start there. Now the compression in an ideal vapor compression cycle. The compression is assumed isentropic or in certain numericals you may be provided that there is a isentropic efficiency for the compressor is provided. In such a case you have to take for the irreversibilities and you have to draw it. That we will discuss separately. In this particular case, I am considering the isentropic compression process only. So bear this in mind. So this is drawn with that assumption. So isentropic process is perpendicular to the x axis. You would move straight and where do you draw? You draw it till the pressure that is the uh, vapor pressure corresponding to your 40 degrees in the saturation conditions. So vapor pressure corresponding to 40 degrees we have come across that it is more or less 1000 kilopascal and after uh, after the dome that is after the say the phase change is complete the vapor lines are no longer horizontal. So you have to land your end of compression process onto the vapor pressure corresponding to this 40 degrees in the saturation conditions. So that will be somewhere here. So you will be landing on the 1000 kPa line. So from there we will traverse line of constant pressure and then we will complete our cycle. So this is how the cycle is drawn on a TS diagram with the conditions being clearly mentioned. So first it is very important to see 
understand the conditions so further i would uh, list out the given parameters i have uh, considered here while drawing this diagram given the refrigerant refrigerant is a saturated liquid okay it is given that way saturated liquid at end of condensation okay second uh, thing we have assumed is the condition of refrigerant just before the inlet of compression so the refrigerant refrigerant is a saturated vapor is saturated uh, say saturated vapor at the inlet to compressor okay then we have seen it is ideal vapor cycle with no irreversibilities so these are the conditions that you should bear in mind before drawing a cycle now we realize that it's uh, not in a very good form to use easily we can definitely use this uh, diagram in our calculations and understanding but it is better if we have a much simpler diagram to deal with so for that uh, yesterday uh, in the previous lecture we have seen that we can explore pressure enthalpy diagram so let us see how uh, we can draw the vapor ideal vapor compression cycle on a ph diagram in ph diagram you have pressure along y axis and specific enthalpy along x axis it is not entropy so that you should bear in mind and second thing is the temperature lines you have to see the shape in which they appear on a ph diagram lines of constant temperature so this is uh, one requirement so whenever you find pressure enthalpy bear in mind that we should use pressures pressure high and pressure low instead of temperature high and temperature low it would always be easy if you can relate that what is the saturation pressure of the refrigerant corresponding to th once you establish it you can see here in the diagram how to draw that i would uh, begin with uh, say this is the line of say the high pressure line in the refrigeration circuit because this is the 40 degrees line so saturation pressure corresponding to 40 degrees would be exactly on this plot somewhere around 10 to the power 3 kilopascal so we can check with the given condition that it is the refrigerant is at saturated liquid and here it gives us a confidence because you have enthalpy specific enthalpy on the x axis you can drop a vertical line to minus 20 degree centigrade because that would that would give you isenthalpic process right so from this you would draw a straight line on the minus 20 degrees because the refrigerant is now vaporizing at constant temperature and pressure till it leaves the evaporator coil exactly as saturated vapor because that is a condition given or assumed here from there it would move isentropically that is compression isentropic compression 
now here we have lines of constant entropy which are provided on the ph diagram here if you can see they are the dotted black lines and they are having different varying slope so when you draw this uh, compression process you have to be very careful in drawing it in a way that it reflects or it describes the true isentrop through that point so if you don't have one line you have to say that if this is having certain slope and the next immediate line is having another slope try to interpret in such a way that you achieve a median between them so somewhere here and here we are dropping the line to the constant high pressure so there are two basic pressure circuits high pressure circuit and low pressure circuit in the refrigeration that we have seen in the vapor compression cycles so we will drop our isentrope till the high pressure value and we finish our uh, say drawing of uh, the vapor compression cycle ideal on pressure enthalpy diagram so if you now compare both the diagrams it looks pressure enthalpy is much simpler to interpret moreover even though we have drawn the compression process using a straight line it would ideally have a varying slope it may not look in a straight line but in a closed interval in a when the temperatures are close or when the pressures are given and if you find that the isentropic lines are more or less straight lines you can approximate it to be a straight line so the only uh, thing that you should bear in mind is the level of accuracy that you are looking at so if you are looking at a very close uh, accuracy you should be very careful in traversing an isentropic process here i hope this is uh, understood clearly but this is not the end of our understanding of pressure enthalpy diagrams this diagram is more tricky so we will elaborately discuss this property diagram much in detail and it requires great deal of involvement involvement and engineering aptitude so let us transpose this to our blackboard to discuss the various processes the various processes that uh, comprise of this vapor ideal vapor cycle can be imagined to be say at most you can see in this diagram there are four processes so we will take our diagram to the say blackboard and uh, we will explain okay so i hope uh, the things are clear to this point we will transpose our uh, drawing of vapor ideal vapor compression cycle on pressure enthalpy chart and we will discuss much in detail now if you look at uh, this pressure enthalpy diagram let us uh, check what are all the components that are there individual processes we will mark off and then we will achieve a better understanding of our pro cycle so let us first uh, start with marking off uh, state points I would mark this one as state 1 this is state 2 this is state 3 this is state 4 our refrigerant is executing the thermodynamic cycle in this fashion 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 1 we have said that 1 to 2 is uh, this process is isentropic compression
so you need work input here right that work is required to drive the compressor next at the end of compression is at state 2 where the compressor is uh, compressing it to the high pressure as desired in that circuit so now you maintain the cooling in a condenser and you pass the refrigerant through the condenser so there would be a thermal interaction between the hot compressed refrigerant and the coolant the coolant could be say the atmospheric air if you consider land based installation such as uh, your home air conditioning unit if you look for industrial you may have sprinkler water okay and if you look at the marine installations you will have sea water being circulated through the condenser and your refrigerant is expected to give up its uh, energy in moving to state 3 so let us draw that it uh, gives out its thermal energy to the amount qh to the coolant so this is the ambient conditions so in doing so you will achieve saturated liquid at 3 so i will write it saturated liquid the saturated high pressure saturated liquid is now expanded through a throttling valve so this section you may find a throttling valve we have discussed in the earlier lecture why we ruled out an isentropic uh, say turbine and we have opted for throttling valve such as uh, say the thermo thermostatic expansion valve so usually in uh, literature you will find it as TAVs 3 to 4 is isenthalpic expansion that means the enthalpy at 3 is equals to enthalpy at 4 that is the meaning of it now when you reduce the vapor pressure the refrigerant temperature drops significantly and depending on the properties or the behavior of the refrigerant it will acquire a certain temperature so for r134a if we throttle it say from 10 to the power 3 kilopascal to say somewhere around uh, say in excess of uh, say 100 uh, kPa that is about 100 so roughly about 134 kPa or something corresponding to minus 20 degrees you will get the required temperature of the refrigerant so at this juncture at 4 the refrigerant enters evaporator coil section so refrigeration refrigerant is passing through evaporator section between 4 to 1 so we will call this one as uh, refrigerating load QL so this is the section where evaporator coil is located now if we have to do certain computations say calculation of uh, say the refrigeration effect or the COP of the refrigerator or we want to check say walk in depending on the conditions uh, or given data we can identify them very quickly on our uh, thermodynamic plot so for that uh, let us quickly see how the calcul values are uh, found out on the table we have for that we need a ruler okay we need a ruler for the purpose we have to make it straight 
Now you look at carefully how we have to draw lines. Okay. So I'm drawing a vertical line. through 3 and 4 to intersect on x axis now i am dropping another line through 1 to intersect perpendicularly the x axis i will drop another perpendicular from straight to onto my x axis perpendicularly so now if you look at the set of values that you have arrived at you will realize the importance of uh, drawing vapor compression cycles on pressure enthalpy charts on the x axis if you look very carefully the specific enthalpy is starting with minus 50 a value please bear in mind that this is these are not the absolute values these are zeroed at a particular reference state so you are you may likely get minus value that doesn't mean the absolute value is minus 50 so please keep this in mind what we are really interested here is the differences between 1 and 4 2 and 4, 2 and 1, we are not really interested in the absolute value. So, there is no harm in choosing different reference points. Carefully check the segment that we have cut off on the x axis. For between 4 to 1, you have a refrigeration effect. So, this is the refrigeration effect. or in other ways uh, you will see that uh, this is close to say 100 this value is at 100 110 20 30 40 50 so each unit is having 10 kilojoule per kg so it is close to say 109 and this is close to 240 so the difference between these two values can be quickly calculated using simple math and uh, you can get this as your q dot l for unit time next between 2 and 1 if you look at uh, the difference this is the work into the compressor between this value to this value is the work into the compressor So, having understood the law of conservation of energy, now we can say that uh, QH is uh, say Q dot L plus W dot, right, in. You can quickly calculate how much energy is uh, given up by the refrigerant in the condenser that is QH now your COP for the refrigerating plant can be quickly calculated as what is desired by how much is required so it make it simplifies the calculations I hope uh, it is understood so let us uh, get a good overall idea to what is happening with the refrigerant between 2 to 3 we are inside the refrigerant is an inside condenser so 2 to 3 is uh, condensation of refrigeration of the refrigerant so this process takes place inside a condenser so you will can find condenser here if you 
carefully look further we will bring out our ruler again for our resistance you check uh, i am trying to draw off a line draw off a line where the high pressure line in the refrigeration in the refrigerator is intersecting my saturated vapor line i am drawing off a certain vertical from there to intersect my x axis right this part red off on the x axis this difference this difference is the say sensible heat given up by refrigerant in condenser what is the meaning of sensible heat the temperature of the refrigerant will drop down with the removal of thermal energy from the refrigerant so i will call this mark uh, as 2 dash from 2 dash to 3 the refrigerant gives up the thermal energy which is called latent heat so latent heat given up by refrigerant in condenser so we can we read we can read between 2 dash this point and 3 that is what the meaning of it so you know how much sensible heat is taken out by the coolant and how much latent heat is taken out by the coolant in the condenser now the work in sometimes is also referred to as heat of compression so if any way you come across heat of compression it is uh, the work in these are some old terminologies but remained in the literature so it is important to know what it means now if you look at the refrigerant the refrigerant is uh, say i would insert uh, one more page for further discussion okay so never mind we will discuss on the same page okay so between 2 to uh, say 3 between 2 to 3 the refrigerant is undergoing condensation okay first giving up certain energy and then undergoing condensation so i would say between 2 dash to 3 the refrigerant is undergoing phase change so there is a first point that you should understand so here in our diagram from 2 dash from here to 3 it is undergoing phase change and 2 dash to 3 happen to be 
the HFG value that is the enthalpy of vaporization. Enthalpy of vaporization at uh, say TH. 2 dash to 3. Now, when we talk about the evaporator section corresponding to that temperature, if you extend the line, you will land up the saturated state for corresponding to that pressure is somewhere here. So, sometimes this is uh, referred to as loss, but it is just a notional loss of enthalpy. It is not a real loss. Since you have executed a process isenthalpic, isenthalpic expansion, since you have lost a certain amount of liquid in doing so, because when it is undergoing an isenthalpic expansion, you will see that uh, there is some vapor generation inside. From being completely liquid here, so I would uh, write it completely liquid here there is some vapor so it is uh, having say dryness fraction of 0.4 right we can say x is equals to 0 0.4 so certain loss of liquid is there which is sometimes regarded as notional loss. So it may be asked sometimes then the notional loss you have for that you have to draw one more vertical here and you can check what is delta H in this uh, region. So that is the notional loss. Clear? So this brings uh, certain clarity uh, on say the vapor compression cycles as we study. There is still more uh, to understand about this pressure enthalpy diagram. Though it looks simpler on the first look, you have to be very careful with the type of scales that are used on this plot. They are not linear scales. So for that, we will pull out a much detailed and elaborate pressure enthalpy chart and we will also examine the saturated property tables as found in your recommended textbook. So if you open your recommended textbook of uh, say thermodynamics, basic thermodynamics from first year, we will continue to use it to study refrigeration chapter and attempting its numericals in the present semester. So, if you open to the end where certain property tables are provided, you will come across this uh, table A11. A11, you will find saturated uh, refrigerant prop, uh, temperature table for R134A are give, uh, provided here. So, if you look at the format in which uh, they are tabulated, since the table is providing for saturated region, it will look more or less in the same shape as that you have come across for water saturated water tables that you have used or popularly used as steam tables. So this A11 has to be carefully looked at now. It starts with uh, minus 40 degrees centigrade temperature. Okay. It starts with minus 40 because that is a reference used in this table it is very important. If you look at the value of HF, which is the enthalpy of saturated liquid of R134 at minus 40, it is set as zero. It is made to be zero. That is the reference used here. And also, if you look at the specific entropy, it is also showing zero value. These are not the absolute values. They are the values set at minus 40 or refer that is made as a reference for this further data. So more or less when we use 
this table for calculations we are interested in only differences between two sets of say states in which case we will get the distance between these two states only rather than the absolute values from absolute kelvin so we are not interested in that particular sense the values from zero kelvin we are interested in what is the distance between two states so that is very easily read off from the tables if you look at uh, the columns you have temperature provided at the extreme left and the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature specified is listed you have vf and vg which are specific volume for liquid saturated liquid and saturated vapor corresponding to the temperature you have similarly the internal energy values provided for saturated vapor saturated liquid and you also have the difference between these two values ug minus uf similarly you have values of specific enthalpy provided you have specific entropy values provided here so once you go through these values you are in continuation they are provided till temperature 100 in your uh, textbook towards the end of this table a very important uh, say lit uh, wordings are put here if you read it the source it says that this table is generated using a software called engineering equation solver that we have been using for some time if you look at this is the engineering solver uh, this software is used uh, in obtaining those values this is the engineering equation solver okay this solver is uh, used in obtaining this data and what it is shown here that it is based on certain fundamental equation it is fundamental equation developed by our certain authors in a thermodynamic properties for hfc r134a between certain temperatures what is very important is the enthalpy and entropy values are set zero at minus 40 degrees centigrade clear so this is the most important wording for this they are reset at minus 40 now this are saturated property tables for the refrigerant after the saturation tables you will find superheated tables also listed under a13 table okay they follow the same analogy how you have used say steam tables in the superheated region the interpretation is the same linear interpretation between two values is the key to identifying values in between the readings that are stated here in the table and you have a pressure enthalpy diagram which is uh, provided under a14 so in our uh, situation we will switch back uh, from this tabular data from your thermodynamics book to something more commercial uh, commercially developed uh, data by a company dupont they are the inventors of uh, various refrigeration uh, refrigerants the freons are popularly invented by their team they have elaborately discussed uh, the properties of various refrigerants in a number of documents if you look at one of the document that i am going through is the doc for r134a it is a hfc and if you see the wording it is an environmentally acceptable alternative because it has no ozone depleting potential that was claimed there the first uh, concern when the refrigerants were used is the depletion of the ozone layer in the higher uh, altitudes 
of the atmosphere so to mitigate that effect different refrigerants are created one such refrigerant is r134a which uh, replaced r12 certain physical properties are mentioned the boiling point at one atmospheric is minus 26 so you have a good understanding from this data that if r134 is supplied in a bottle to a ship it is having liquid at saturated conditions at the atmospheric temperature but at a very high pressure so the moment you open the valve the refrigerant escapes from that high pressure inside the bottle to atmospheric pressure so if you suddenly open a bottle have containing liquid r134a you will immediately notice that there is frosting and the temperature close to the exit of this valve would be minus 26.1 degree centigrade because you have reduced the vapor pressure suddenly the temperature will fall down this is the behavior of the substance the main theme are two in studying and opening this uh, particular document one is bringing your attention towards uh, a parameter called gwp global warming potential compared to carbon dioxide how much does this substance contribute to climate change so it is stated as 1200 times powerful to carbon dioxide so you may not find this refrigerant uh, in future because it will be replaced by another refrigerant which will have both odp0 and gwp0 but for the present semester we continue to use this for understanding and for learning purpose and very carefully developing our uh, say understanding about the way the refrigerants behave or what are the expectations out of a substance if we have to use it as a refrigerant so that understanding we can get from the analyzing these refrigerants performance in a refrigerator cycle next in front of your screen is the graph of uh, pressure versus temperature for r134a if you look at the way the curve is uh, for that particular refrigerant if you drop the vapor pressure the temperature would come down so this plot is being shown by the smooth curve corresponding to how much vapor pressure is how much temperature for the refrigerant right so next uh, in the line that we are more interested is this pressure enthalpy diagram so this is uh, what i would like to discuss much closely in this lecture and then call it off understanding this diagram is very crucial and complex too for that reason i have pulled out the diagram for this document for analysis in a different software so that i can discuss a lot of things in detail and it would be easier for you to understand so the document that uh, diagram is brought into a cad software so that i can have a very good flexibility in zooming and drawing your attention to a close value for that reason i have brought it it will also uh, give a very good uh, understanding that if you use a small diagram it is very difficult to read the data from it you should have a sufficiently large diagram to read the values your accuracy depends on having access to a very big chart usually on a0 or if a1 size if you have it is a very fairly accurate diagram you can get it and your calculations will be as precise as computed by say a program or by interpreting tables very carefully 
but even with the basic uh, geometrical tools that you may have it is uh, possible for you to compute the values very closely let us examine this chart in detail if you look at this plot it, it is brought into a cad environment and it is scaled by me i have used the scaling if you look at this uh, bottom line i have marked it off from the origin all along the x axis okay all along the x axis till reading 650 so between 100 and 650 there are 550 units if you look at this is marked as 550 mm so if i do this kind of scale adjustment it would be very convenient for me to measure off values and quickly get the and specific enthalpy difference between two states because it is directly calibrated in terms of mm on the other hand if you have a graph sheet and if you have a steel ruler first thing that you should understand is establish a scale to work with how much in the linear dimension equal to how much in specific enthalpy so that is the grasping subject here next is your uh, say the scale that is used on y axis on the y axis if you look at on the left hand side it is provided in mpa megapascal different charts use different units in this particular chart provided by dupont you have on the right hand side you have pressure in bar and on the left hand axis you have pressure in mpa you can make use of either one it is equally good second thing that you will notice is the scale that is used on the y axis is not linear like the earlier property diagram tables you have seen you have come across ts diagram the ts diagram is using more or less uniformity in uh, the scale that is it's a linear scale both along x and y this pressure specific enthalpy charts they are using a linear scale on the x axis but they are using logarithmic scale on the y axis because the way in which uh, pressure has to be represented it is essential to convert it into logarithmic scale otherwise it would uh, present two bigger values to work with so for compacting the data it is common to use logarithmic scales on the thermodynamic uh, ph diagram this brings students to a point where they have to understand how to interpret a logarithmic scale charts so for that purpose to explain you to the nitty gritties of such a thing i have uh, marked off certain intervals on this uh, chart to make it very clear if you look at the intervals are drawn with different segments of line to impress upon you that the values or the scales cannot be read off directly if you look at this dimension it is showing as 38.69 mm between the origin and that is at between 0 0.01 mpa to 0 0.02 megapascal but if you look at uh, say between 2 to say 3 it is different between 3 to 4 it is different right so it is different in different intervals so it brings out a complexity or doubt in the minds of students how to interpret if a pressure is given such as say my refrigeration cycle is operating between a high pressure of say 1 mpa and a low pressure of say 0.2 mpa where should i mark how should i interpret if the lines are marked here if their data is available then you can quickly draw the straight lines horizontal lines as we have done so in earlier case but here if you come across certain intermediate values suppose say you get certain 0.37 mpa where do you look for so let us develop certain idea of uh, how to do so remember that uh, ph diagrams are very simple and easier to work with we have seen and they have to be interpreted carefully 
when applying to engineering calculations. These days software replace this complexity, but however, a student should learn how the data is uh, stored in graphical format and in tabular format. It improves the engineering competence or ability to work with the complex charts. So let us see how uh, we can read off the values. Notice that there are dotted lines which are provided for your assistance. These dotted lines should be made use of wherever they are provided. The first thumb rule is wherever you find these light dotted lines make use of them. Don't use uh, only the values that are marked off and y axis. Between two values such as 0.1 and 0 0.08 MPA you find one more line in between. So this corresponds to 0 0.09. Now between 0 0.08 and 0 0.06 you have a line, dotted line, this line which is 0 0.07 MPA, this is 0 0.05 MPA, this is 0 0.03 MPA, but MPA is a very large unit so you need a much precise uh, interpretation for that you have to use a very sharp pencil and a steel rule, you have to use calculator for doing linear interpretations between two available intervals. So we should always make use of scientific calculator. Next thing is let us uh, examine on a holistic uh, basis what are all the data that are marked off on this uh, chart. You will see a a point that we first began when we discussed about uh, pressure enthalpy or temperature specific entropy plots uh, much earlier in the previous lecture. So we began with uh, the critical point it is shown here as cp dot cp. From this critical point you will find that certain faintish lines that is rep that are represented here in this particular chart by long lines followed by segments followed by dot and then the segments repeating. So these are the lines of constant dryness fraction we have seen here. They are only available under the dome that is the saturated region because you will find the leftmost dark line is saturated liquid where the dryness fraction is zero that is there is no vapor and on the extreme right you will find saturated vapor where dryness fraction is one is totally vapor. Next you have lines of constant temperature. The lines of constant temperature they run vertically down in the liquid region from say the above the superheated region they are coming down vertically and if you see the moment uh, the enter the vapor dome you would see that the dependency of pressure to temperature is quickly seen that they have both become dependent uh, say properties for the substance and they are if you keep the one parameter constant the other stays constant during phase change so you will find that this constant temperature lines are horizontal and the dome the saturated liquid vapor region then they extend further in a more or less vertically downward fashion. So these are the lines of constant temperature. Temperature is same on each of the point on one particular line. Then you have you have slanting lines which are marked again and thus using segments with dots and if you look at carefully their units it is said that specific entropy 2.40 kilojoule per kg kelvin here so these are the lines of constant entropy that is the entropy is constant on one particular line and if you look at very close space data is provided here for this chart so 
it makes it as an ideal choice in our numericals the much closer the available data the much higher your precision should be clear so next you have lines of constant specific volume they are line they are running with the dotted lines if you look at uh, in this uh, screen you will come across the lines of constant specific volume clear so you have a lot of data provided in the same chart so though it appears 2d physically but it's multi dimension in data also you will notice that if you measure the distance between two temperature lines and the say the saturated region even you will come across a surprising thing that they are not linear or linearly spaced in fact if you look at between minus 40 degrees and minus minus 50 degrees the spacing is 30.93 mm very close whereas between minus 30 and minus 40 it is 27.84 minus 20 and minus 30 you see it is a different dimension altogether so these lines are neither linearly spaced in such a case how to read so always remember that wherever data is available first mark of the next immediate data points that you are available suppose you have a temperature say 15 degree centigrade in this particular property table you come across 10 degrees line is there 20 degrees line is there so next you have to find is 15 degree centigrade so what you should do is measure the distance mark off the midway say this is your 20 degree line you see between the highlighted text i am using vertically downward line okay minus 90 degrees it is showing here and it is uh, having a section length of 17.86 mm it is possible for me to read it off on such a software quite easily but if you are working with uh, say a steel rule 17.86 mm locating is pretty difficult exercise but you can achieve a fair amount of accuracy even working to one decimal for example uh, we will solve a numerical in the next video lecture on this uh, chart we will see how close we can get to the uh set to that uh, values computed by using a tabular data or by a program so that you will gain confidence in using these charts and for our end semester exams we are likely to use these property charts for calculations so I advise the students to practice them practice using them and understanding them okay so if you are given 15 degree centigrade so this is the uh, say 17.748 length so here would be my 15 degree line i can quickly do it with such a software but you should be having a good eye and good engineering sense to mark off such a data on physical charts and when it comes to marking of pressure i advise you something like this suppose you have to calculate value between say corresponding to for example let us consider a case uh, say 0.32 or 0.032 say 0.032 mpa a value corresponding to 0.032 mpa so let us 
I'll write this here. Take a case. Pressure I am trying to calculate is 0.32 MPa, or rather 0.032 MPa. Okay. This is the case that let us consider how to interpret the data. This is the uh, 0.32 bar, which is uh, say a large value when it considered even comes to the second decimal places, it is a significant value. So you cannot neglect the second decimal place. So how to read such a data is illustrated here. So 0 0.32, what are the data 0 0.032? What are the data that you can find data points which are listed here? 0 0.032, you don't have a 0 0.03 value. You have the next lower value that is provided is 0 0.02 and the higher value is 0 0.04. But what you can notice is that a dotted line is provided between 0 0.02 MPA and 0 0.04 MPA. So this line corresponds to 0 0.03 MPA, this dotted line. This dotted line corresponds to 0 0.03 MPA. Now you measure off the value between this dotted line to 0 0.04. You are finding that it is 16.2 mm. Okay. 16.2 mm. Is it readable on a scale? The first question comes here. So on a normal steel rule, if I say you can measure in mm only. So 16.2 is a very difficult proposition. But with a careful eye and a sharp pencil, you can measure up to one decimal place. Maybe you can measure up to 0.5 mm, either 16.5 or 17. So it is okay if you even uh, land up with a value 16.5. Is it clear? So if 16.2 is not readable, I advise you something like this. If you can read with either 16, 16.5 and 17.0 mm, suppose say, choose this value because you are getting 16.2 which uh, uh, normally it is difficult to interpret. Then you see the difference between that. For a 16.5 mm, you have 0 0.01 MPA, right? So you 0 0.01 MPA is represented by how much? 16.5 mm. That is uh, your first conclusion from the chart. This is 0 0.03. 16.5 mm to 0.04. So next is uh, you have 0 0.03 MPA you are able to locate it because that is represented by the dotted line. Though the value is not provided the dotted line is specified. So take this value. Now you can say that 16.5 is 0 0.01 MPA and if you have to work out say 0 0.002, how much is the requirement? 0 0.002 MPA, what should be the difference? Because you have up to 0 0.03 already what you don't have is 0 0.002 data. So for that, uh, the simple interpretation would lead to something like this. 
16.5 mm divided by 0 0.01 multiplied by 0 0.002 so how much uh, it would be in uh, millimeter 16.5 divided by 0 0.01 is 1650 this multiplied by 0 0.002 is 3.3 mm since it is difficult to mark or read on a ruler 3.3 mm you can round it off to 3.5 mm I'm sure 0.5 mm is very easy to locate using a steel rule. Clear? So now you would go back to the chart and you would mark off a line from there to how much uh, extent you have just calculated 3.5 mm. So vertically 3.5 mm so I will use the input here 3.5 mm Enter. so from here you can mark off the line which is uh, corresponding to 0 0.032 MPA this line would give you the point 0 0.032 MPA I hope you have understood how it is being calculated. So always remember choose the data points which are just next to the required value. Even if a data point is not written but you may have a shade faint dotted line running across. So that will give you a good yardstick. This shows the importance of using property table chart with such a amount of say curves drawn through it because otherwise it becomes very difficult uh, with the accuracies to work with say a numerical problem I hope uh, now you are familiarized with uh, the pH diagrams and how to read uh, say the data from them In the next uh, uh, video lecture 8, let us attempt solving a numerical. We will pull it off uh, a very easy to do numerical from the textbook. We will see uh, how we can do it graphically. So that will build up certain confidence and show how the problems can be solved quickly. Tabular way has uh, some difficulty in using because of isentropic processes and isenthalpic processes you will have to establish the state points with certain numerical computations which may be sometimes tiring for a student and he may end up making a mistake there a graphical method is quite simpler once you plot the vapor compression cycle on the property table it becomes very easy to read off the values on the x-axis so in the next video lecture we will do a certain simple numerical to build up confidence so i hope uh, the lecture has clarified much of the complexities involved in calculations if you are further interested in knowing about how to read off the values from a logarithmic scale chart you may use internet references always reach out to educational websites which are located worldwide their uh, portals may specify how to read the logarithmic scale okay so i at this point i would uh, call it off for today we will continue in next lecture lecture 7 so thank you.